Hello everyone, a very good morning, very good evening. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Malik Arjun here. Uh, today I'm gonna quickly talk about uh, the networking inside my Rack Rail application cluster. This is going to be one of the challenging topic for many of the DBAs who often get confused with the different network which involved in my Rack setup, which involved in any of the Rack setup in any of the client. So there are so many networking, so many IPs comes into picture when it comes to Rack. So, you know, it is a time for all the DBAs who work on the real application cluster rack enrollment to understand this networking concept in details. So I'm going to make it very simple today. And after the end of this session, you, of course, able to differentiate different types of networks and different types of IPs needed for the rack setup. And there won't be any much confusion on that. Right. Uh, quickly jump on to my uh, paint session here. I can quickly uh, demonstrate on that one. Right. The motto of this section is uh, set up to node rack. So our motto is set up to node rack or set up three node rack. So that's the ask. So somebody will ask you to do a setup of two node rack, setup of three node rack. Then what are the IP needed? How many IPs are needed? And how I can work with our network admin to get those IPs? That's the intention of this particular video here. Let's understand about the two node rack setup. Later we'll talk about three node rack setup. So for two node rack setup, of course, we need a first two servers. Let's say these are my two servers. I can put here two servers. Okay, these are my two servers. I can simply say this is my node one and this is my node two. Server one and server two, it may be RHL, Linux, Windows, AX, or HP server, whatever it is, like two server, two Linux server. And on top of that, uh, when we do a setup, you are going to install your GI or ASM home. So where your plus ASM one instance will be running. And on the other node also, same thing. So your GI or ASM home will be installed. That software is installed. And where your ASM two will be running. So, and then we are going to install Oracle home. So I can then simply say Oracle home. You're going to install Oracle home on top of that your DB. So I can say DevDB is my database. So DevDB will be running over here. DevDB instance one, DevDB instance two. Two instances will be running over there. Right, so this is your overall setup looks like. And in order to achieve this uh, ASM instance one, instance two, DevDB instance one, DevDB instance two. So of course we need those shared disk. So we're going to attach a uh, shared disk, whatever the size uh, you prefer. So once you attach those disks to both the servers, for example, node one, node two, both having access on the same disk, node one and node two, and node one and node two. And again, this one attached to node one and node two. So these are your shared disk attached to your uh, both the servers. And on top of this particular shared disk, we are going to create uh, something called disk group. I can say this is my disk group one and this is my other disk group. Right, so I can say this is my data plus data disk group, and this is my plus record disk group. So where my DevDB data files will be reside under this data disk group, where my DevDB uh, archive logs, control files, read log files will be reside under my record disk group, right? You can have n number of disk groups. So this is a simple setup, how it looks like. Right, coming to networking now, so this is high level overview, how your two node rack setup look like, including your ASM database instance and the shared storage. Right now come to the main topic that is your networking. So basically um, in real time world or in any of the customer environment, we have a public network and we have this public network and we have we have this public network and we have this private network that take right so these are the two things public network and private network public network means it is outside of your organization for example your organization is wipro.com or infosys.com or oracle.com the whatever your domain outside of your domain the ips are able to access for example, I have IP 192.168. Let's take 192.168.1.100 or 101. So this is the public IP. 
public IP. So I can say one more. 192, 168, like 10.101. So 10 series. This is private. I'm just giving a rough example here, not a accurate one. So if it is a public IP, I can access this IP outside of my domain. And if it's a private IP, I cannot access outside of my domain. It will be within my domain. I can able to access within that domain. That's a simple understanding. So if I say, uh, if I can take this one as my entire domain, like just a rough example I'm talking about here. So if I take this is as my entire domain, or uh, my Oracle, I'm a Oracle, uh, Oracle.com is my domain. So this is my entire domain and Inside, outside of the domain, whatever IPs are able to access, that is my public network. And whatever IPs which are not able to access from outside of my network, which can be accessed within the network, that is your private network, right? Simple understanding, right? So for the uh, understanding of IP addresses, what I'll do now, node one, node two, uh, I'm gonna start with the putting the IP addresses now. This is node one and node two, each node will be having its own IP address, that's a node IP. I can say node to node to IP address. And or else like I can go with this node one first. Let's go here. Node one, node one IP address. So node one IP address, we physically call it as a physical IP. So physical IP, or the node one IP, both are one and same. So I can give that node one IP as 192.168.1.101. So this is my node one physical IP that is typically your public network. Next, coming to the new IP for the same node, node one that is like remove this node one, like you know, that is getting confused. Like I can say physical IP for that node. And the next IP is your private IP for that particular node one. So typically node IPs will go like this, 192, 168.1.1, and the private IP should be the different subnet. I can simply go with the 10 dot series here, or I can go with the 20 dot series here, whatever you feel it. Let's go with the two dot series. 1.101 is your physical IP, or you can say a public IP, right? Many words public IP or the physical IP or the node IP. So both are one and same here. Many people will, I'm gonna make it as a simple here. I'll write it over here. Let's remove this one. Public IP, many people will call it as a public IP or node IP or physical IP. So they can call it as a public IP, node IP or the physical IP, both are one and same, right? On the, when it comes to that, uh, IPs of that node and the private IP again it's a intercommunication. Next, public IP is done, private IP is done. Now VIP. So we can say node one VIP or just say VIP of that node. So I can say again the VIP will be of the same in public network. So VIP I can go with same IP range. 101, 101, 102, I'll go for node 2 and I'll go with 103 for my VIP. Public IP, VIP, and private IP. So VIP stands for virtual IP for that node. So the same three IPs will go to my node 2 as well. So public IP, that is 102. That node 1 specific IP, VIP, that is 104. So 101, 102 and again one or two here. So that is a simple three IPs for node one and node two. So node one public IP or node one IP or node one physical IP, all three words are same. Many people will say with the different, different words. That's what I mentioned here. Public IP, node IP or the physical IP, all are same. So typically we go with the node one as a IP address. So for that, I'm gonna go with 192. So I'll just go with the node one here and I'm gonna expand here. Node one is here and node two is here. Node one detail is here, node two detail is here. So node one, 192.168.1.101. So for node two, 
again ip address is 192.168.1.1 so node one IP address again, you can call it as a node IP or the node IP or the public IP or the physical IP. So all are same here. I can put, if that is, you want to put it here, I can put it, right? So these all are same. Next come to VIP, node one iPhone VIP. So node one iPhone VIP. So node one iPhone VIP, again, that IP is in the same range. 192, 168, 1.1. 101, 102, and 103. So 103 is your node one VIP. If I can go here, node two VIP. That is virtual IP. 192, 168, 1.104. So that is your node two VIP. Again, node one, get just think this in your mind. Public IP, node IP, physical IP are all same name. And that will be in your public network. So these two IPs are in public network, right? What I can do now, I'll put green color for this one. So public IP means it's a green and private IP means it's a red, right? Now looking at these IPs, my public IPs, I can say this is my private IP, which is in red color. And again, this is my private IP, which is in red color and this is my, let's go here now, go back here, green color. These two are my public network. Public network means which is accessible outside of your domain. Right, so let's go here. My node one IP or the physical IP or the public IP or the node one VIP, both are in public network. Public network means accessible outside of your network. Right, let's go to third IP. That is your private IP. Right. Right. Sorry for that. Like, let's see uh, the private IP. So again, you can call it a private IP or private network or many words. Again, for this one, I can say private IP or private network. So many people will call it as a private IP or private network. Both are one and same here. The private IP is again 192.168.2.101. So it will be in the two dot series. If you observe here, it's a one dot series, which is a public network. And this is a two dot series, which is a private network. So if I can put the same thing here, in private IP, the private IP or private network, again, the IP is remain same. So this will be 192, 192.168.2.102. So the host name typically deals with the node one, that's a node one IP, node two, node two IP, node one VIP, and IP, uh, that is a public IP of that node one VIP, and node two VIP, and again, public IP of that node two VIP, and the private IP, you can call it as a private IP or private network, both are the same. So naming convention typically goes with node one preview, P-R-I-V, preview, private IP. So again, node two, it's gonna go into the same naming convention, node two P-R-I-V, that's a private. Right, so these are your, Three plus three, six IPs are needed for my two node rack setup here. On top of that, we need something called a scan IP. So that is your new IPs. Scan IP. We can call it as a scan IP or your scan VIP because typically your scan IPs are in VIPs. And you can call it again public network. Right here, your public IP or node IP or the physical IP or same as your VIP, same as your scan IPs. All your physical IPs, node IPs and node VIPs or the scan IPs all are in your public network. So if I can say scan, these are the scan IPs. So typically we go with the three scan IPs. So I can go with here 101, 102, 103 and 104. So typically I can go with the scan name, just a scan as a name of that. And I'm gonna go with the three IPs, 105, 106, and 107. These are my three scan IPs. So if I can put all of them here in my scan, I put over here. 
and it will be your scan IP. You can call it as a scan IP or you can call it as a scan VIP. Both are same. So again, these are in your public network. Public network moment, I can put it in the green color here. Right. So these are your typical IPs in order to do a two node rack setup. Two node rack setup. Remember, we need a two IPs, two network we needed. One is a public network and other one is a private network. If I can go here, this is my public network and this is my private network. Public network means accessible outside of your network, outside of your domain, outside of your uh, entire domain, whatever organization you are working. That's your public network. The, those IPs are accessible outside of your domain. So if I can say this is my entire domain, like infosit.com or wipro.com or oracle.com, this is my network. And outside of network, anybody connects to my host, node one or node two, if they want to connect, they can use either a physical IP, they can use either a VIP, or they can use either scan IPs. Because these three, scan VIPs or scan IPs, or the physical IPs or the public IPs or the VIPs are all in green color. That is public network. They can able to access it outside of my network. And these IPs, private IPs, whatever you're seeing, this is they are able to access from node one to node two, from node two to node one within the same, within the network. They cannot be accessible outside of network. From outside of network, if I try to connect to these private IPs, I'll not be able to connect because those are your private IPs accessible within the network. Right. Let's go here, remove this, remove this. Right, let's remove this all. Right, and in simple words, in order to do a setup of two node rack, you need a two network, public network and the private network, two network is needed. And out of those two network and bunch of IPs are needed. One is your physical IP, I can say physical IP, and you need a v physical IP and you need a VIP, node physical IP, and node VIP for node one, and node private IP. This is your private IP. Physical IP, VIP, and private IP, three IPs are needed for node one. Similarly, for node two, we need a physical IP, VIP, and private IP. Again, three more IPs are needed. Three IPs for node one, and three IPs for node two. So totally six IPs are needed. And we need a three more VIPs for my scan. You can have four, five, six, seven. There's no limit on that. You can have whatever IPs you needed, but typically three is a best one, right? So once you have this three plus three plus three, nine IPs, you can easily able to do your two node rack setup. And in case if you want to add one more node, for example, you want to add your third node, node, if you want to add node 3, again, you need node physical IP, node VIP, node public IP, three more IPs you needed. And if you want to add one more node, node 4, again, you need three more IPs. So totally, you need three IPs for each node and three IPs for your scan. And out of this all IPs, these IPs are segregated into two groups. One is your public network and the other one is your private network. So once you're able to understand this networking, you can easily work with your network admin and then you can configure your all the required IPs for your rack setup. Right, so that's it for the today's session, guys. Uh, let's connect in our next session with a new topic. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye.